All right, guys, welcome back to the High School Star League 2017 playoffs. Crusader Kid in here with Enderel bringing you the action for this uh, best of five. And unfortunately, Ender, once again, oh no, champion select bug. Thanks, We're Riot. just trading this one off. Oh, man. <laughs> well, well, we got a Kha'Zix band out of Wooten on the blue side. We can see Illusion that. Illusion from them, too. A Jace. On the other hand, coming through from Garden Grove. So I guess I just get to control the picks and bands once more. Got a uh, Zach as our third band coming out from Wooten High School. A Riven and a Graves to finish things off from Garden Grove. So they're keeping things identical to the last game that they were able to win. The changeup, though, is going to be once again a first pick Oriana this time going over to Wooten and uh, Sword in mid lane. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, we just have this very strange spectator bug where in client, these champion selects not loading, and it's been persisting throughout the day. So just having Ender L fill in everything. Garden Grove and Tom says we, and as you can see on the screen, tied up one to one right now for uh, this best of five match in the high school Starly 2017 grand final. So Exciting here. I mean, we've had a great first two games, a back and forth one between these two teams, Ender. Yeah, and uh, again, running guys through the bands or the picks right here, rather. We're going to see Spider once more on the Rek'Sai in the jungle. Kenton Trong are going to be trying his hand on the Braum, but on the other side of the rift, we have a Jax Luckin, the Blind Jax pick that's been seeing a little bit more resurgence. As of late, and I want to almost say that that's going to be a jungle jack for positivity because that was followed up immediately by Galio, which we assume a race by Jace is going to be playing in the top lane. Yeah, jungle jacks and positivity would just continue to fit in with him playing these carry junglers. We saw the uh, the least in the last game, the graves in the first game. So it wouldn't be too surprised to see that coming out from him. Right, and we do have a Zaya locked in for Garden Groves. They're going to be playing the Zaya Brom lane once more. That worked out incredibly well for them in the last game, and that will give Garden Grove the opportunity to counterpick both the top lane and mid lane matchups for themselves because they haven't revealed all too much in this first rotation. Now, as far as the bands going on through, we've already seen the Ash taken off the table by Garden Grove. I expect to see a Caitlyn come shortly after if we're staying with how the games and the bands have been unfolding so far throughout this series. And a Cho'Gath band coming through. Apparently, Race by Jace didn't really enjoy that matchup against Theral, so no Cho'Gath going to be seeing the light of day in this game three. Yeah, uh... <laughs> Taking that one out of the pool, I guess, because it was so deadly. Yeah. yeah. Well, following things up, we got a Jin ban, so not necessarily okay. the Caitlyn. Wonder if uh, we'll see Fuichu on that one. Wooten finished out the day, taking away the only counter pick, I guess, into Orion. There aren't a whole lot of good picks, in, uh, but the Ari is definitely one that is on people's radar, so not going to be seeing an Ari come through from Sretva. There is potential that we see him once more on the Corky, but in the top lane for Theral, it's going to be his Renekton. Not the crazy Cho'Gath, mm -hmm. but the Renekton that worked Renekton out from pretty well game. from last time. Yeah, yep. for sure. Ender, um, just as a recap, what are the picks we have so far? All right. Well, on the blue side for Wooten High School, we've got Oriana, Jax, Galio, a Jinx just locked in, and Ooh. a hover of Karma wow. that we expect to go on through. And Garden Grove has a Rek'Sai, a Brahm, a Zaya, and a Renekton at the moment. We're still waiting for their last pick. It turns out Wooten selected Nami, so it's going to be a Jinx Nami for them down in the bottom lane. And now, of course, Garden Grove has the opportunity to select their counter or their preferred matchup into Swords Oriana. Beating a challenger mid lane on Oriana, though, going to be nigh impossible, but Streffo's going to be trying the victor for that. Yeah, Oriana's been being... Uh... Picked up by both sides here, but once again, it goes over to uh, Sword, as you say. And, and is it the victor locked in for Shredfa? Yep, is the victor. So, interesting mid lane matchup right there. 
Sure, a whole lot of AoE from both these teams with the ability to scale up into the late game and deal massive amounts of damage. But I think everyone's eyes got to be locked on to positivity on the Jacks. He carried game one at the Graves. Games, game two was a big flop of the Lee Sin. And now is the opportunity to uh, shine big or fall flat on his face once again. Yeah, well, while we wait to get on into the game, guys, we'll be taking a quick break. Be right back with the second or third game between Thomas S. Wooden versus Garden Grove. It's so far tied one to one. You're watching the High School Star League 2017 Grand Finals brought to you by Twitch. Don't go anywhere. Alright guys, welcome back to the High School Star League 2017 Grand Finals. And it's Thomas S. Wooden tied up with Garden Grove High School here. 1-1 one -one in the best of 5. Crusader Kid in here with Enderel. 
bring you the action. Yeah, and Garden Grove already looking like they want some early blood here. They've got the Braum level one, and maybe you're going to spot out a race by Jace if they take that first step forward and try to find him out in the pixel burst right there. Yeah, they're going to be uh, hanging around here just to see if anyone was looking to possibly invade into the jungle, but just hanging around here on the side of the mid lane. And, uh, I mean, when you're in the best of five, you start to look to play mind games with your opponents here, and that's what's going on right now. Yeah, I think they're almost expecting positivity to walk in to get down deep vision. Oh, they know a race by Jace is right there. Yeah, they definitely see him, but they're not walking up. They're done. They're nope. back. Okay. Nope. All right. That's it. Game's that's, over, guys. That, that's cool, too, I guess. We can spot him out and not go for the kill. So, interestingly enough, Spider, once again, going for that extra 2% experience here on the Rek'Sai. As he did in the last game. Yeah, probably going to look for uh, Raptor's Red into the Scuttle Crab, but you don't want to... Uh, actually, oh, he almost cleared the ward. That would have probably given him a very early level 3 as well, but you can't lose any of these minions here. That path is not going to work out. Yeah, just um, uh, Race by Jace helping him... Uh... Race by Jace giving Spider a bit of a leash right there. Always appreciate the help out from your opponents, even yeah. though you know they don't have your best wishes at heart right there. And Spider is probably like TY in all chats. Yeah, Spider gonna be looking for that early top or mid lane gank, honestly. But top lane is definitely where we'd expect to see it come through. Now, Race by J should know that something's fishy because he put down the ward. He won't spot Spider walking down towards the bottom side of his jungle. So if he plays this smart. He should let. Daryl push him in or at least drop an early ward down to make sure he stays safe here. Yeah, so bottom lane we're seeing they're trading here and I think what's going to be interesting is going to be these jungle matchups and the mid lane matchups here this uh matchup between sword and Daryl has been I mean very good for both of these guys here and ooh Spider trying to move up into that top lane but flash away by race by Jace yeah same idea of a gank that he went for last time time around not nearly as Bro, oh, now the bottom lane. Yeah, trading coming in here. It's that Jinx and Nami, two champions you don't see too often in the mid in the bot lane nowadays. But they're just looking to trade out, put down some damage. Top lane, Daryl going so low. Yeah, even with the early assistance, I believe Daryl took quite a bit of damage from the minions that he walked into willingly, trying to lock down the kill onto a raced by Jason. That Galio does not have a flash available, so. Even though he is winning these trades, Daryl's going to teleport back into lane and be virtually unfazed by a race by Jace at the moment, knowing that one more return visit from Spider could mean first blood for Garden Grove here. Yeah, so... It's going to be just the calmer start here. We did see a lot of early game ganks coming in in that first part of the last game so a race by jace knows who he's what he's up against here double cloth armor to start out his build uh up against theros renekton yeah this is not going to be a fun matchup for him in any sense of the word galio wants to really be stacking a lot of mr not build a whole lot of arm although this game he's gonna have to split that relatively evenly dealing with some damage dealers like cheeseburger like shret uh shretva here it's going to be difficult to itemize in the early stages, especially if Daryl can get some sort of CS advantage in the top lane and get to a point where he's so powerful he can start denying a race by Jace off of the minion waves. One item I, I'm interested to see actually is the fact that it's a blue smite choice from Positivity, not a red smite for the dueling, <laughs> not a tracker's knife for the vision or the ward hopping, but yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I agree on that. I, I would have much preferred to see a red smite from the Jax or even the tracker's knife, as, as I already mentioned. The blue smite, I'm not 100% on as to how effective it's going to be on the Jax, who already has an incredible amount of mobility, has the ability to lock down his targets as well. And not sure positivity cares what you think, Ender. I'm just not going for the poacher's knife on Lee Sin. In general, already a surprise. So top lane... 
He's gonna come in here for the gank. Getting in onto Theral. Gonna not be able to get that stun down, I don't think. Somehow. Uh, he definitely could have gotten a kill right there. He yeah. had his blue smite, first of all. Could he use that to, you know, make me eat my words and lock down the kill? He also could flash. He could have Yeah, flashed well, Erased by Jace is gonna do it himself there. Getting that first blood in as he uh, got in there for that. They're all even use that flash, couldn't escape. Yeah. Positivity did all the work right there. It's, it's sad that it's a solo kill from Race by Jace, because <laughs> that, was, that was all positivity. And oh, threat. sword flashing under the turret with the auto attack to get the kill. Man, Shredfoot just wanted to stick around, have just enough gold. He literally has 10 after the purchase of his upgraded hex score. He needed just that one extra minion to end up paying the price for it right there. Paid the iron price, the Ender. Too. You Man, what that the... means. No, I don't. But the <laughs> Jack's pick in the top lane. Forget your Game of Thrones references. <laughs> so good at crushing down those turrets. And that's a six minute first tower of the game too, along with first blood. I'm sorry, Ender, it's all I can think about. <laughs> Season 7 starting today. Bottom lane though. And you're missing up is cheeseburger. And I'm missing it. To watch some League of Legends here and teleport channeled and cancelled by Race by Jace. Now yeah, it's gonna give a window in about a minute's time where Pharaoh's gonna have a teleport and race by Jace will not, so look to then. Maybe a play to be made. Yeah, so. To be seeing 2 0 start here for Wooten High School with kills in the top and middle lane. Bottom lane looks like both teams are trying to get something started, but nothing coming up here. And Sword is just absolutely being brutal to Shred fight here. But top lane, we're seeing once again gank here. Heroic Engine's gonna be coming in to try to get in onto Theral. And that will be another kill. This time it's positivity securing it. Yeah, easily done right oh there. There's my no God. turret. Oh my gosh, That's Sword, a... once oh, again. No. Thunderlord's Decree proc <laughs> to finish off the kill right there. That feels terrible if you're a Shred. But on top lane, as I was saying, Theral doesn't have a tower. He doesn't have the vision to walk up and farm those waves. He needs Spider to be up there babysitting him. But the second Spider goes up there after he dies, you see him, you push down the bottom lane. This is going horrendously for Garden Grove. Yeah, 4-0 start already for Wooden High School. And... In this game, someone's gonna be clinching a match point here. So, one to one, the scoreline. Crucial game three. It's just, I mean, we're only eight minutes in, but I'm just trying to piece together how exactly, as Garden Grove, you come back in wow, this first game and as well. Yeah, and second turret. They already got the one in the oh. top lane. This is an absurd advantage. Yeah, for, first for and right second now. turret. Yeah. 4,000 gold at eight minutes, almost nine minutes in the game. That's virtually unheard of. And I guess the one thing, the one thing <laughs> that Garden Grove have going for them is that they've got a victor in the mid lane already with the, you know, upgraded E at the moment. So ideally he can just camp mid wave clear for days and Garden Grove can try and scale up a little bit later on into this game, but there is a massive dive potential from positivity. This Jax already with his Blood Razor enchantment knows that he'll have a hero's entrance as well, so he can itemize very offensively and still get away with it. That's that's scary here for Garden Grove. Yeah, this is just dangerous right now. I mean, we're seeing every single lane pulling coming up with an advantage here for Wooden High School. There's no CS lead for the Galio in the top lane, but hey, they've been able to kill Renekton twice. So Wooten High School with the commanding lead, as we're going to keep saying, to start out this game. Already has some people roaming around, already picked up that first dragon just less than 10 minutes in. Yep, an Infernal on the way as well, so that they can maintain control. Nice payday in a few minutes from now. Rift Herald also is going to be spawning, and... Even though it might be hard to siege down this turret in the mid lane for, for quite some time up against the wave clue that we've already mentioned. All you really have to do now if you are Wooten is secure that Rift Shell, drop that mid, and it'll virtually one-shot the tower and ignore the victor entirely. So, 10 minutes here and already a pretty hefty gold lead right now for Wooten High School. 
and the shock wave thrown down onto Shrek, but oh, super oh, mega death man. rocket to finish it off. Huichu that was nasty, yeah. With the Shrek, kill. Uh, Shrepa lost the flash at the same time. You don't have to have a rift herald. You don't have to worry about victory. If he's six feet in the ground, they're gonna get a turret. Middle lane turret gonna fall. Third turret of the game goes to Wooten High School. Top lane erased by Jace. Finding some advantage here has finally has a CS advantage here as he's picked up that frozen part as well. Yeah. Just look at the bot lane right now too. Minions dying to the turret. No one picking them up. We already have CS advantages in literally every single lane right now. And you know that <laughs> Garden Grub are just hemorrhaging gold at the moment. There's nothing they can really do about it. They want to keep up vision to make sure that they don't lose more of their jungle camps, but just rotating between these lanes to try and match the pressure of Wooten loses them out, so yes, big time. So now we're going to be seeing where these two teams decide to go as Wooten High School with the lead going to get started up here on this Rift Herald should be able to easily, should be an easy, easy take here. Yeah, no one's even in the area. They've got the timer on GG's red buff. It's going to be spawning relatively soon. So after they pick up the Herald, decide where they want to use that, they can just encroach their vision a little bit deeper and make sure that Spider doesn't have any opportunities to stay equal in Golden Experience with positivity right now because he honestly is doing the best out of Garden Grove right now, matching his opponent's golden experience, and soon that too is going to start to spiral out of control here for him the rest of his team. So middle lane now, pressure coming out from Wooten as Kuichu will just be chilling in the bottom lane looking to push it up here as they just continue to hold this lead. And uh, now with that Rift Herald, we'll, just, we'll have to see where they decide to take it. Positivity currently holding on to. Maybe heading down to this bottom lane so they'll look for a uh, push in middle and bottom. Now all they have to do is out-rotate their opponent, zone them away from getting over towards the turret. Positivity has the benefit. Being the jungler that picked up the Rift Herald, he can be pretty much anywhere on the map to decide where exactly he wants to use that. And he's still got about two-thirds of the duration remaining so if perhaps one of these lanes they can get a little bit of chip damage down on the turret they can make sure that they secure the tower with the herald 100 percent for themselves of course the herald doesn't one shot those turrets by itself it needs a little bit of assistance and they can make sure they have one more member two more members than their opponents Wooten can make sure that they do get themselves an objective with it so calming things down here, but smartly so, Wooten in high school don't want to, you know, ha have a game two on their hands here as uh, they were taken down in that last game and the back and forth one, but Wooten in high school, I mean, they came home with some advantages, but were taken down each time, so going to be playing a bit more carefully here, but so far just the leads will continue to stack for them. Yeah, and even though it might seem like the game is stalling out right now, like, oh, it's a six... Five minutes ago, it was 5,000. What's happened, you know? Nothing's really going on. Well, there's not really much the Wooten can do. They got the dragon. They got the, uh, you know, Rift Tail. They've gotten three outer turrets. It's really hard to extend your advantage from this point, and it's only 15 minutes into the game, so there's a whole lot of time for oh, them to geez, get killed. Very, very... We're gonna get bursted down here. A force to use that feather storm gets the root down to free to teleport. Gonna get channeled by both of the top laners here. Theral gets in first. Race by Jace coming in. Gonna be getting the taunt down the bubble onto Theral as well. And both teams will decide to back away. So no kills in that fight. Yeah, there is the opportunity now for Wooten to try and go in and maybe steal away this blue buff. We're still 40 minutes off of that dragon spawning. It doesn't really seem like Wooten wanna press down on towards Garden Grove's throats anymore because Positivity is farming way onto the top side of the map. 
making sure he can be out leveling Spire, moving into a potential Dragon Smite battle between these two players. Race by Jace, trying to steal the blue, can't. Rift Herald getting almost got timed out there, so positivity quickly using it to send it up to that top lane and. And I'm not really using it for much effect, but we'll see if they decide to put it to use now that it's out. It was forced out. Infernal Drake, though, as we talked about uh, several minutes ago, gonna get started up here by Wooden High School, and looks like it will be a free one for them. Yeah, we've seen Wooden start up dragons before, though, without. A little bit concerning that this trend continues for the side of Wooten. It's, it's funny, too, because the idea behind dragons killed in the top lane is that. You want to create that global pressure to make sure that Feral is topside when he doesn't have teleports. There really is no way for Garden Grove to contest that dragon. But in reality, that Drake was never going to be contested from Garden Grove. And now, even though, yes, there is a siege being set up in the bottom lane, Feral's going to be able to easily clear away that Herald. And as long as the rest of the team can hold on 4v5 down here, it should be okay for Garden Grove. Yeah, so bottom lane turret. Gonna fall four turrets to none in favor of Wood in high school. So far, none of their team has gone down as well. As they're pushing onto the inhibited turret now, they want to go for the engage. The dive coming in, tidal wave. Heroic engines coming across. Positivity stunned up. And the heal coming through to keep him alive. And he jumps back in. Still alive here. Finally taken out, though, as Spider goes down as well. Both junglers taken out of the game for about 30 seconds. Wooten goes back over to get a, started on that inhibited turret. They take it down and they go for the re-engage. They take down Feral, but she's weren't coming through with the snares as they continue to trade out here, but it'll be Wooten able to take down this inhibitor and make their way out after it. First inhibitor only 17 minutes in. Yeah, very nicely done by Wooten right there. Again, they pulled Feral down into the bottom lane. He didn't have TP, so he had to recall. It was very late to that fight. That honestly might have been GG right there for Wooten. Had positivity and Sword coordinated a little bit better on that ball delivery right there. Sword just pulled the trigger a little bit too early and ended up whiffing on that ability completely. Had that connected, that is two pretty immediate kills. And as I said before, potentially the end of the game at pre-18 minutes. <laughs> Rift Herald has been making his way up to this top lane <laughs> this entire time. Gets taken out as he was on a sliver of health left. Unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like he would have done a lot of damage to the tower even if he survived enough to wind up and go on in there. Herald's damage scales on its percentage of HP left, so... Unfortunate for that. Daryl did his job though, as far as clearing away that objective. But in a minute and a half, we're gonna have a Baron buff on the table with a downed inhibitor in the bottom lane and down 8,000 gold now. It's gonna be hard to imagine a world in which Garden Grove actually win a fight and stall this game out post this next Baron. Yeah, so. Now top lane push is going to come out to so some good was made use of, of that uh, Rift Herald is pushing in that top lane. Now Thomas has Wooden High School will look to follow in its tracks. Positivity getting under that tower. Tidal Wave coming across as they take down Kenton. Positivity getting pretty low. The tower shots, but he'll be okay as this top lane and a turret going down. Bottom lane still being pushed up by super minions. Yeah, we might actually have Shredford just drop the ultimate on the way, potentially, if Wooten wanted to continue their siege right here. This global pressure is really mounting, and Garden Grove can't deal with it all too well. They're more than likely going to lose this tier two in the middle lane, and as we've said before, 20 seconds on the Baron, and there's no vision anywhere close to that pit for Garden Grove. Yeah. And now we're going to be seeing that middle inner turret go down seven turrets to none. Absolutely crushing coming out. That's tough. That is really, really tough right here. And contesting this Baron is going to be so difficult. Right now is the window. Right now is when Garden Grove have to go over and get some vision down around the Baron. I don't think they necessarily want to contest this next Drake. It's an ocean. And they don't have an inhibitor, whereas losing the dragon costs them 
you know, obviously the buff that it's going to give up, it will not cost them the game, whereas losing a Baron pretty much just ties up the bow on this one for Wooten. Yeah, so going to be seeing this Wooten really taking control here. They're moving up into the jungle right now as still pressure continues for Garden Grove. Inhibitor's still down. I mean, Super Minion's still pushing in their base. And Wooten are just all over the top half of the map right now. Looking to make another push on into the base after going back. And actually with Sretfo walking down, he's trying to take a blue buff right now. There's ah. no real wave clear from Garden Grove. This is going to be a tower. Yeah, this tower is uh, going to get taken down at half health right now. Shretfa isn't back with this team just yet. And they're still taking pressure from minions inside of their own base here. So Inhibitor Turret's going to fall. And the Inhibitor is sure to come up next year as Garden Grove High School. Unable to do too much here. Yeah, big mistake coming out from Shretfa. Should know a little bit better than to go ahead and try and clear that blue buff. Now they're going to lose another one. They've got lose three inhibitors and still win the game 99% of the time. Yep, inhibitors gonna go down here. So that's the third inhibitor. Only 21 minutes in here. And now the fight will commence. Cheeseburger getting doped on in the back line. Heroic Entrance coming across as it's a multi-part fight. But in the front line, it was a double kill. And three members going down for Wooden High, to Wooden High School. So Wooden gonna be able to push in here. Make a quick end to this game here. 22 minutes in. On to the Nexus. And this is going to be Wooden High School match point. They take the wood and they'll be up 2-1. to one. Yeah, by far the cleanest game of the series so far. They were offended by the way they played in game number two. Knew they had multiple opportunities in which they could have actually come on top in that fight. But unfortunately for Garden Grove, they just get cleaned out right there. Lose the game in 22 minutes. Yeah, so that's going to be Wooden High School. One win away from reclaiming their spot as the best high school in North America. We'll take a quick break before we get on into that game. Game number four, sure to come up soon, guys. We'll be right back.